Buffering capacity represents the amount of protons or hydroxide ions the buffer can absorb without a significant change in pH. The larger the concentration of the acid and base in the buffer, the larger the capacity the buffer has of withstanding these pH changes. So let's look at two examples. So this one wants us to calculate the pH of a 5 molar acetic acid and 5 molar sodium acetate solution. So go ahead and pause the video and calculate the pH of that buffer. Restart when you're done. Since we have a buffer, we can say that our pKa is equal to 4.74. So we can use Henderson-Hasselbalch, so pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. Our pKa was 4.74, our base concentration is 5, and our acid is 5. So log of 1 is 0, so pH equals 4.74. Now we've added HCl. HCl is a strong acid. So we can ignore the chlorine, since it'll be a spectator, and our acid would react with the weak base of the buffer, and we can ignore the sodium since that would be a spectator as well. So hydrogen is reacting with acetate to produce sodium acetate. I'm going to pause the video and calculate the pH of this solution. So remember that they're reacting, so you should have used moles. Since it was a one liter solution, we had five moles of this one and five moles of this one. Our hydrogen runs out first. So we get 4.99. And 5.01. We divide by total volume, and then we have a buffer still, so we can plug it into Henderson-Hasselbalch. We have our pKa, our base was 4.99, and our acid 5.01. Notice we barely have more acid than base, but we do. And so our pH basically doesn't change, but if we bring it out to more sig figs, we get 4.738. So notice our pH basically remain constant. So now, if we change the concentration of acetic acid, and sodium acetate and resolve with the same concentration of acid being added to it. Let's see our pH now. So I'm going to pause the video and do the top one. So just like before, our pH is equal to our pKa. since we had equal amounts of acid and base. Just like before, our equation can ignore the chlorine and the sodium. So if you haven't already, go ahead and solve this bottom one on your own. Restart when you're done. Just like before, the acid was our smaller concentration. We still have a buffer. 
my base is 0 0.04 and my acid is 0 0.06. So you should have gotten 4.56 as our pH. Notice the change is about 0 0.2 versus a second ago when our change was basically zero. We had a higher concentration of acid and base on our buffer, which was able to withstand the changes in pH much better than the smaller concentrations of acid and base. So pause the video and figure out which of these would have the greatest buffering capacity. Restart when you're done. So we're looking for the one with the biggest concentrations of both acid and base. So C has a high concentration of acid, but a low concentration of the base. D, they're both small. A, they're both pretty small in comparison to B, where I have pretty high amounts of both of them. So they are all buffered solutions, but they don't have the same capacity since they don't have the same concentration. You also need to be able to choose the correct buffer. When choosing a buffer, you want the concentration, you want the concentration of your acid and base to be as equal to one as possible. And we want to choose the pKa closest to the desired pH, because if we have a pKa close to the desired pH, our ratio of acid to base will be closer to one. So here's one multiple choice type problem that you could see. They give you a pH of 4.3 and they say which of these acids would be the best to make a buffered solution with. So step one is you should find the pKa of each of these acids. Restart when you have the pKa of all of them. Looking at those pKa's, the closest to our desired pH would be C, so C would work the best. We could make B work as well, but our ratio of acid to base would be more off than it is if we chose C. So this one wants to know the most effective pH buffering range. So step one is we need to find our pKa. Our pKa of this is 4.2. It's going to be most effective plus or minus 1. So looking at this range, the only one that's in the range of that would be D. 3.2 to 5.2 would be within 1 of our pKa on both sides. So if I had benzoic acid, it can buffer from 3.2 to 5.2, but outside that range, it's not going to be a very effective buffer. You may also have to calculate the ratio of acid to base or base to acid that gives a certain pH. So pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. And this is acetic acid, so our pKa in this case is 4.74, using reference material. So on this problem, we're basically trying to calculate this. We know the desired pH is 5. We know our pKa is 4.74 plus log of x. So we subtract out the 4.74, and we get 0.26 is equal to log of x. The opposite of log is 10, so 10 to the 0.26 <coughs> is equal to x. So 1.82 is equal to x, which is my base over acid. 
but they don't want base over acid, they want acid over base. So to flip this, I just put it over 1. So 1 over 1.82 gives me 0.55. The closest answer here is D. But our last one is similar to that last one, where first you need to find that ratio. So find your ratio of base to acid and restart the video when you have that ratio. So our base to acid ratio should have been 7.24, but we know our concentration <clears throat> is 1 for our acid. So base over 0.1, again that's our molarity, is equal to 7.24. So multiplying those, my concentration of B should be 0.724 molarity. If I multiply my molarity times my volume, that's going to give me moles. And one mole of NAF is equal to 41.99 grams of NAF. So 0.724 times 2 times 41.99, we get 60.8 grams, or E as the closest answer.